So if you guys are new to the channel, you guys might not know that I'm a huge Yu-Gi-Oh! GX fan. You guys can see the Jaden over there in the back. But also, if you guys are new to the channel, you guys might not know that we do a building on a budget series where we take meta competitive decks and build them within a $100 budget. In today's video, we are doing a building on a budget hero deck profile. Of course, hero, one of my favorite archetypes from the GX era. And I'm excited to be bringing it to you guys on a budget. So with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. And I'm going to show you guys how to build hero in a competitive way to compete in today's format. December 2023 on a budget. Let's get right into it. So as always with the Building on a Budget series, I really want to show you guys you can go on TCG Player, build this exact deck, and it's going to cost you exactly $100. $100.19. And that's including the main deck, which is 41 cards, an extra deck, as well as the shipping. So I'm always going to include shipping in these budget decks. A lot of people don't. They're like, oh, you know, this deck only costs $90 now. But, but, Let's be honest, shipping is important and that's something that's gonna cost you, right? So it's $100 on the dot with this deck and you guys are gonna see everything is right over here. Of course, you can optimize your card in TCG Player, which is really nice. And it's gonna be able to take the exact deck list that you want, put it together, optimize the price for you. And here, again, it's $100 on the dot, 56 cards, 41 in the main deck, 15 in the extra deck. And I really wanna show you guys what this build looks like because it's really, really powerful. All right, so getting into the deck over here, honestly, it was pretty tough to get it into the $100 budget. And the reason for that is because historically, hero cards are typically actually pretty expensive. You guys might be looking at some of the cards here in the deck, and you guys might notice that we're playing a lot of staples. And thanks to the rarity collection, we can actually play a lot of staples at a budget. But <laughs> the expensive cards in the deck are actually the hero cards, funny enough. We got it to $100. We're within the budget right at $100. Okay, 19 cents. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Sue me. Let's get right into the deck profile now. I want to show you guys what this deck list looks like. Of course, we are starting off with the vision hero package over here so we're playing three vision hero ferris two vision hero vion as well as two increase the reason i like to play two increase is because if you draw one you don't want to be able to not combo because you only have one increase i like playing two increase you draw one you still have one in your deck you're still able to combo so that is it for the vision hero package then we are playing two destiny hero malicious one destiny hero denier as well as one plasma you guys are going to see that we're not actually playing dark angel in this build and the reason for that is because when you combo a lot of the time at least i've noticed in my experience with hero when you you're trying to go for the dark angel lock which is really powerful it first of all makes you very susceptible to a lot of things but on top of that i don't think locking your opponent out of spell cards is actually as broken in today's format as it was in other formats of course it's really good against a deck like purely for example but a lot of decks like centurion unchained and all those kind of decks kind of play around it so that's why i'm not playing the dark angel lock anymore right now for today's format but these are the four destiny hero cards that you absolutely need in this deck and then for the elemental hero names we're playing two stratos one neos we need the neos for a lot of our combos now one honest neos one liquid soldier and two shadow mist now these are the elemental hero names that we're playing here i really personally still like honest neos because it helps you kind of otk and push for that last bit of damage which is really nice it's also a protection card if you end on dark law your opponent wants to be over the dark law you have that honest neos which is really powerful as well but the reason we're only on two stratos because i feel like that's going to be the comment that i got the most first of all stratos is uh kind of expensive and it kind of makes it tough to put into the budget even the common stratos is like four or five bucks a pop and you know that adds up on top of that the reason i actually truly believe that you only need to be playing two stratos is because this deck is so hyper consistent as it is already having access to stratos something like hero lives and then vision hero ferris plus malicious is full combo ferris plus stratos is full combo there's so many two card combos in this deck anyway that i think two stratos is enough the problem with playing three stratos is this deck really survives and lives off of its spell cards so when you're playing too many normal summons or not normal summons per se but too many monsters aka three stratos you end up having multiple stratos in your hand and it's actually not that good so two straddles actually I found is the most optimal number for straddles. So two straddles and then the rest of the elemental hero package over here. Now for the fusion cards, we are playing a lot of fusion cards. So we're playing the one miracle fusion, one polymerization. Of course, keep in mind, you can always get these back from your graveyard with wonder driver, which is really nice. And we're playing three fusion destiny. Fusion Destiny, of course, is an insanely powerful card, so you have to be playing three. It gets all your combos started on its own, right? It's kind of like a one-card combo for this deck, which is really nice. And then we're also playing two Mass Change. Mass Change is really good when you're going first, of course. Being able to dodge hand traps like Valor and whatnot when you go Stratos, you can dodge it with the Mass Change. But then you can also use Mass Change to go into Dark Claw with your Shadow Mist, or if you have a Mali on your side of the field, which is really nice. So I like two Mass Change. And on top of that, I really like the Quick Plays. I'll talk about this in a little bit, but it's really good with Droplet, right? You activate Mass Change, you can then activate Droplet to get rid of the Mass Change and get a card your opponent can 
controls and then your mass change will still resolve so it's kind of really nice in that sense same thing with any spell really you can activate a spell chain droplets and then it kind of breaks opponents boards in that sense so that's why i really like the spell cards and it's really important to be playing so many spell cards in this deck again rather than three straddles where you have to pitch an extra straddles for no reason you can at least get multi-use out of these spell cards with droplet right in that combination and then of course we're playing three hero lives gets you to any one of your hero monsters of course typically you're going to be going into straddles with hero lives but you can a lot of the time go into shadow mist if you already have a straddles in hand and the reason for that is because shadow mist will then get you to search a mass change which is really powerful as well right so three hero lives and then lastly we're playing one favorite contact favorite contact into shining neo swingman is absolutely busted so we have to be playing this combo i think is just the best thing to do in hero right now unless you're playing a pure blind second build which if you guys want a pure blind second build let me know in the comment section down below and we can make that happen but for now i think the favorite contact build is really powerful so of course one favorite contact and again a lot of these cards have one print only keep in mind like this is like a four or five dollar card i think this is like a three four dollar card something like that like you know the hero cards add up in price so i'm happy that we could get it into that hundred dollar budget but moving on here we are playing the one reinforcements of the army one foolish burial one call by the grave just really powerful cards here on their own foolish burial of course to get your malicious into the graveyard kind of like an extender for you reinforcements of the army also to get you into straddles is really nice as well and then call by the grave of course is always good and then lastly we're playing some staples over here that i think are really powerful in today's format so we're playing three ash of course ash is the most generic hand trap and i think it's also really cheap now with the priority collection which is really nice so three ash of course generic and really powerful Powerful. and then three imperm as well another card that got reprinted in the rarity collection and it's just really good going first and going second going first you can set it going second you can use it as a hand trap and or a board breaker which is really powerful as well and then three forbidden droplet droplet is one of those cards that i think you should definitely be playing in today's format it's really good against unchained it's really good against pure it's, it's so good against so many different decks so i really think droplet is really powerful right now and i think you should be playing the three now the reason i'm playing 41 cards not 40 you guys can be like hey why don't you just cut one droplet or something like that and play 40 on the dot i actually prefer to play 41 honestly i kind of wanted to play 33 34 but for two reasons i did it one to keep it within the budget and two the reason i like playing more than 40 is because it avoids drawing bricks like increase drawing bricks like denier i mean denier is not the worst in the hand right but you don't want to draw it neos as well you don't want to draw so i like playing more than 40 for that reason 41 i think is a, is a really powerful number here it's a really good solid number right so that's it for the main deck 41 cards in the main deck moving on to the extra deck we're playing two extra hero cross crusader i think cross crusader is one of the most important link monsters you guys can be playing one infernal device also a really expensive card because it only has one print right and then we're also playing one one driver which also i think has one i think maybe wonder driver has two prints now but regardless infernal divisor as well as wonder driver being able to get back your polymerization and miracle fusion is really powerful of course one sunrise very important in your combos one wake up your elemental hero this like honestly there's three cards in this deck that took up like 50 percent of the budget i'll show you guys that in a little bit but wake up your elemental hero is really important now in a lot of combos of course going second helps you odk going first it helps you set up a lot of combos one shining neo swingman of course one of the best cards that you can make on your opponent's turn and use it as a kind of disruption which is really nice one elemental hero flame wingman infernal rage of course a combo piece and by the way i keep saying combo pieces if you guys want to see how this deck combos i actually put out a video not too long ago about all the elemental hero combos that you guys need to know so if you guys want to see that i'll link it at the top of the description but you guys can also check out the channel it's already there on the channel as well which is really nice right so one flame wingman one absolute zero another very expensive card because of edison format right so ab zero i think is really powerful with your liquid soldier kind of helps you break a lot of boards if you can end on this too with like a mass change set you can then make acid and then absolute zero acid is a crazy combo because ab zero is gonna resolve because ab zero is gonna activate to destroy all monsters your opponent controls and then acid is gonna activate to destroy all back row your opponent controls so it's kind of like a board wipe combo over here and i really like having that board wipe combo having access to it and then we're playing the one dark law of course the one blast kind of to help you dodge a lot of the hand traps we're playing the one dpe as well as the one destiny hero dystopia i personally like playing dystopia of course for time this card comes up a lot of the time when you know there's 30 seconds left on the clock you're going first you can set up dystopia burn your opponent it sucks that sometimes you have to win that way but it is another win condition for you which is really nice dpe of course we all know how powerful dpe is and then lastly we're playing the one baguska now you guys might be wondering why are you playing baguska in hero baguska in hero actually makes a lot of sense if you think your opponent can't play around a baguska and on top of that your hand is not really great like let's just say you open hero lives with like a liquid soldier right and it doesn't really do much for you you can actually just kind of end on baguska a lot of the time and baguska makes it so that you can survive a turn and then if you're able to survive a turn a lot of times you're able to otk going into turn three right so i really like the baguska as a plan b or plan c if you don't open a great hand or sometimes if you just think setting up a baguska is going to win you the matchup sometimes you can do that as well and it's just kind of that card for you so baguska is the one card i would say is you can swap out for something else maybe a second dpe or something but i think baguska is really powerful in today's format so that's it for the deck right here 41 cards in the main deck 15 cards in the extra deck it's exactly guys over here exactly a hundred dollars and 19 cents 
I hope you guys don't hate me for the 19 cents. Listen, Hero is really expensive. By the way, I wanted to show you guys what uh, was really expensive in this deck. So I'm going to show you guys some of the you know, more expensive cards. One of them is right over here. So Wake Up Your Elemental Hero is a $9, $10 card almost. Extra Hero Infernal Devices is an $8 card. Of course, this is the cheapest ones you can find, by the way, right? This is a $5 card over here. This is a $3. Because a lot of these cards also only have one print, which makes them actually relatively expensive. So majority of your budget went into one Wake Up Your Elemental Hero, one Infernal Devices, and then one Absolute Zero, which is somewhere here as well, which is like a $12 card over here for an Absolute Zero. That, that's absolutely insane. You get it? I wanted to show you guys that you can still play Hero on sort of a budget. It's $100 on the dot, which is our goal, which is what we want to keep it under. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys all for watching. That is Hero on a budget. This deck costs you just exactly within our budget. It's $100. And you guys are going to get all the competitive staples, all the Hero cards that you're going to need. And this deck is just so powerful in its own way. I think it's one of the best Rogue decks in today's format. So if you guys do enjoy Hero and you guys are GX fans just like me, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. On top of that, we're uploading every single day in the month of December. So if you guys are subscribed, you guys are going to see all the content. If you guys are not subscribed, then you guys might miss out. Don't miss out. Subscribe. Okay? Subscribe. We good? Subscribe? Cool. With that being said, guys, though, I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.